We're working on our 2012 Diller semi-trailer. We've got a brake chamber leak on this, so we're gonna supply this with air just to see which one it is. So we can hear air leaking. There now. Sounds like it's on this side. I'll make sure that other one's not leaking too. So we place the fan housing on this. We've got some other stuff that we've got to work on here. Ah. Oh. Just. Okay, release that air. Okay. Now, spray some penetrate on these pins. Bolts on the chamber itself. change the slack adjuster. Two. Now yeah, we'll see if we can loosen these up before we get the torch underneath here. Alright, hand me that torch. Yeah. We've got to get the pins off of the yoke here. And we got to heat these bolts up that are on the back side of the brake chamber here. And these, these studs here, we got to loosen them nuts up, get these pins out. And we can drop this unit off in there. Um, we're going to need some tools to get them hoses off the brake chamber there as well. off in there. Now I gotta just try to get these pins out. Thank you. 
right, so that when I cut the end off that the cotter pin went through, because they almost proved to never come off. off of both of those. Now we just gotta, all right, now we gotta take these fittings off here. And what we need to do is we have to get the swivel to work on these hoses. I'm using some stuff out of the white and blue can here, but it's not WD-40. Imagine that. All right, now. Gonna hold that part of the hose. Where's your wrench? You took it. just to get enough frickin' rust. Alright, this is going to fight me all the way off in there. I broke it loose with the pipe wrench, the swivel. And this hose here. Just gonna fight all the way. We're gonna get this off and then we'll end up pulling the whole brake chamber off. We know this hose is coming from the left, and the other hose is coming from the right. So we want to make sure we don't screw up the location of them here.
All right, we've got our hoses unhooked, both of them here, left side, right side. I actually spray these. See if maybe some of that penetrating oil can't get into them swivels. Doing the rest of this work to this chamber here. No, I'm just <coughs> getting them out of the way. We got our yoke unhooked from our slack adjuster here. Oh, that seems a little stumpy. We've already took the nut off of the right hand side. We just got to do the nut on the left here. You can see this one's stuck in a little bit. We're going to pull this out. Actually, you can just measure from the end of the threads. So, from where the threads start to the end of the threads is five, five and five eighths. I'm just going to measure on this new one here. Five. So now we'll take and just spin this nut down to this point here, and then we're going to cut this rod off and bend that this jam nut is down on the threads. We're going to use this jam nut to, to correct the threads after we cut it. Do this is to measure from here, but this one is uh, back inside itself, so it's screwed up. This is ready to be put back on the trailer. Okay, these brake chambers can be rather dangerous if you don't know what you're doing with them. This, these ports here, happen to be in the position that I need them to be in. You can set these guys up here. You can adjust this chamber. You can turn it, but. 
you need to cage it. I'm gonna end up running this guy through the bag like this. Okay, there's that. Now we want to get our pins in place. Grab me a smaller punch, Jared. Ah, wait a minute, I might not need it. No, I don't need it. There. Alright, now, the cotter pins back in place. These are auto slack adjusters. So, what this pin is on the front here, every time that when that makes a full stroke, it knocks this pin here and then that works on a little paw inside the slack adjuster and that's what keeps your brakes adjusted. They're junk really. They don't they don't work like they're supposed to. But unfortunately it's what we have to go with. nuts are tight so we're all good there now we're just going to take the um, jam knot and I'm just going to use a pair of vice grips because I don't have a 15 16th wrench underneath here we're just going to tighten up this jam knot on this yoke Jared give me a 15 16th wrench where there's one on the bench There's that. Now we gotta hook up our hoses here. Get this there. All right, now. All right, Jared's handing me a wrench to tighten up that jam nut. All right, that jam nut's tight. Okay, now we. 
you want to keep these hoses in the right spot but we know the left one went on the left side and we know the right one went on the right side so we're hooking up the left one now and that penetrating fluid did a wonderful job because now the swivel works Spread it in the right spot. Alright, that doesn't want to thread on there. Swivel is working beautiful now. <sighs> Cheap, no brand penetrating fluid. Okay, what we have, we have our uh, service line or our emergency line um, hooked up. We got our pins in the slack adjuster. Now, these slack adjusters had a small stud on them. I don't know, like a seven sixteenths head on them or whatever we pounded these um, half inch nuts on there so that we had a larger surface to um, be able to uh, run that adjuster now Jared's gonna supply me with some air here go ahead and hit me some air Jared Jared's gonna supply some air to the um, system here so that we can adjust these brakes. So that air tank back there is filling up for the supply line. Actually you can uh, unhook the blue one. Yep. Okay. So you got the lift axle going up so the the brake just released. Now the brakes are released. Now we're going to go and uh, we're going to adjust the brakes. See how much this this is the brake shoe here. This is the brake drum. Can you we do need anything to do that. No. We need to um, adjust this so it brings that brake shoe closer to the drum. Now in order to do that, we need to adjust this slack adjuster here so we've kind of cheated and we've welded these nuts on here so we've got a we can adjust this with a three-quarter inch wrench now as I turn this slack adjuster it's going to um, I go the right way it's going to adjust that brake shoe. You can kind of see that I'm set you guys in a rigid spot here. As I'm adjusting this slack adjuster you'll see that brake shoe moving against the drum itself. <coughs> Alright, now it's all the way tight, and I'm just going to back it off. There. A little bit. So, that is within close tol closer tolerance to that brake drum. Now, what you got to be careful of is as these brake drums wear, you can get a little bit of a lip there and give you a false... Um, 
false reading on that or a false uh, appearance. This one over here has got that lip there. There's a little bit of a lip. Uh, let's get up and a little farther. Uh, uh, see this one here has got a little bit of a lip there, but the shoe is in close contact to the drum. So. Alright, that's going to conclude the uh, brake chamber replacement part of the video here. Um, we've got it all in place there. Everything's tight. This jam nut I actually adjusted with a wrench. So, rate, comment, and subscribe. And we are on to the next job here. Let's see if I can roll out of here without hurting myself. Okay, see you at the next one.